many companies that can make these kits. So there's no reason why we can't have five million in a short period of time. So, Dr. Wright, I spoke to uh, John Gerace. He's the president of Diasorin Molecular. So they're making tests. And he said they can make 300,000 tests a month once they get started. And they're doing that now. But he says there is an acute shortage of the raw materials needed to interpret those tests. So basically, all the people making the tests need to go to these, these suppliers to get a, a, a reagent, I guess, essentially the thing, you know, you, in layperson's terms, you sort of dip it in to be able to interpret. Is it positive or is it negative? Can this be resolved in time? How serious of a problem do you think this is as you look at it from a hospital perspective? I think it's a very serious problem. That's what's limiting us right now. It's hard to tell if we're still in a phase where we can have few enough cases that we can contain it or if it really is, as most of us suspect, spread through the community now and we need to move to a mitigation phase. So I think quickly we need more tests available, more reagents, so that we have the ability to do so. Many academic medical centers and independent laboratories are starting to develop their own tests because the government hasn't been able to provide it yet, although they're working hard and providing more. I know our state in Massachusetts received many more tests this week. So we're hoping it will open up. The question will be, will it be in time or will we be moving to a phase where we don't test everyone because we assume many people have it and restrict to people who are uh, have other medical conditions or in places like nursing homes or universities where a case hasn't been diagnosed yet and we try to contain the spread there. So, so Dr. Rocknell, on this point, the president made it clear not everybody should take the test and he made it clear. Here he is. We don't want everybody taking this test. It's totally unnecessary. Uh, and this will pass. Uh, this will pass through, and uh, we're going to be uh, even stronger for it. If, if you had the tests you needed, who would get a test? First, people who are tested are people who are ill with respiratory symptoms. Mm -hmm. And then we want to make surveys throughout larger cities to see who else is infected. We have no idea right now how many other people besides the symptomatic ones are infected and we need to know that to plan mitigation we have no idea in cities or in rural so areas sort of like south korea did just in a sense there's Absolutely. some random testing which there. they started in january mm -hmm. right and that's why they were able to keep the numbers down so how big of an issue is this reagent issue when you look at south korea i mean I, I, you know, I don't exactly understand the full supply chain here, but I can say, see that in certain parts of places in the world, they appear to have that supply. They yeah. have the reagent and they're able to interpret the test. So why don't we? Well, I mean, you know, part, part of it initially, the test that were sent out to, to what they call the, the point of care spots uh, was a flawed test. So they didn't scale up that test. That was part of the problem initially. Um, there's no reason why they shouldn't be able to create enough of this reagent. As you point out, they've done it in other places around the world. The test that was used in many countries around the world was de developed in Germany, adopted by the World Health Organization, then, and then you know, used in all these countries. We can do that as well and, in fact, take it from a manual process, which takes a lot of time, to a more automated process, that high-throughput process, which you kept hearing about today. Right, right. All right, all of you, please stay with me. Next, one of the hardest-hit countries, Italy. Italy now has more than... Seven